Hi, my name is John Storms, and today I am going to go over the initial setup of my Raspberry Pi 2, which I'm going to be using for uh, my show player. So, uh, I'm hoping to get a lot better performance running X Lights off of that than I have with uh, Lightarama running off my uh, my computer. So basically, Raspberry Pi <coughs> is uh, an entire computer on a little tiny card. So the first thing I need to do is I need to load up the image onto a micro SD card. And these are the little ones that are about the size of a fingernail. So this particular brand is GTC micro SD class 4. So I got this on sale on Amazon a couple weeks back. Okay, so we'll just open that up. So the little guy, you need an 8 gig card. Okay, so this is that little guy. And then this is like a regular SD card. So it's just a holder. So we slide him into there. Like that. And then we slide the whole guy into the micro SD slot of your computer. Alright, now we're ready for the next part. Okay, so up on the screen here, I'm on the uh, the Falcon Christmas form, and these are the instructions on how to install the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Alan Dahl, and I have links to this on my page, also has an excellent video uh, tutorial showing how to do this, uh, and I highly recommend you watch that. Okay, so I'm inserting the SD card into my computer and it's automatically set up on my computer to pop it up and so you can see yep it's an empty card but that's not good enough we need to format it so we go to instructions and we've inserted the 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 SD card so now I want to download the SD formatter okay so I want to download it for Windows click accept and here it comes I run the setup. <coughs> Next, put I put everything on the D drive. That's just my computer. Okay, so as it's installed. So now I go find it. And there it is. Yes. So what I'm gonna want to do is I'm gonna format it with size adjustment set to on. So I go over here and I confirm that drive E is my card. I don't want to do anything else. I'm going to give it... Uh, let's see, uh, option on. I'm going to do a full format. Click OK. format okay <coughs> and it's off all right so this format is complete I exit here so the next thing I want to do is I want to download the latest release of the Falcon Pi which is this link right here so it's downloading 1.5 so while it's downloading, I actually have downloaded this before, so let me just grab it. And all you do here is you say extract to. I'm going to select the card that I just formatted on the E drive. <coughs>
and so this is the entire image. This is the operating system and the XLite software <coughs> all in one image. And it's putting being written to that little micro SD card, which is essentially going to serve as a kind of like a hard drive for this computer. It's its it's its storage. Now that's storing the OS. Now we're also going to have to put in storage for everything else. So for that, we need to also connect a um, jump drive, a USB jump drive, to one of the USB ports, and we need to format that as well. We'll do that after this is done. Actually, I could probably do it at the same time. I just need to free up a port. Okay. Oh, you fit. There we go. <coughs> Alright, so I just stuck a jump drive in. So this is now media F. So I'm going to say format it. do is FAT32 and you want to give it the volume label media. Okay, so he's formatted. Look at that, we're multitasking. Format's complete. Gonna eject the jump drive. So now I can take it out. <coughs> and my copy has finished going over, so now I can remove him. Let me double check where I'm at in the instructions. Download the latest release, extract the software, insert a flash drive, media, Okay, so now <coughs> I am done on the computer. It's time to go uh, play with the Pi. Well, let me eject this first. Okay, now I'm all set. Okay, so we're back. So now we're actually going to hook up the uh, the Raspberry Pi. This one I actually got an auction at work. It was for, I think we were doing on a, a charity auction for the food bank and somebody had the Raspberry Pi set up. And so I was like, ooh, I actually need one of those. So basically this is a mini computer. So this is your power connection. This is an HDMI out. This is audio. Then we have our hardwired ethernet port, four USB ports. This is a connector for a ribbon cable. The micro SD flash goes right there. And that's pretty much everything you need to know. But it is a wholly self-contained computer that will do wonderful things with the lights. So <clears throat> here I have the micro SD card that we had uh, just imaged. So I'm going to pull him out of there. And then we're going to insert him into this slot. We give it a little click and you can feel that it's spring-loaded. Then I'm going to take the jump drive that I just configured. I'm going to stick it into one of the USB ports right there. <clears throat> and then I have a mouse and a keyboard. You know, this is so this is literally just like setting up a computer. So I, I stick in the mouse and the keyboard into these other USB ports. Just like that. And then the Ethernet connection, Oops. I'm just going to plug it in to here. So for the initial setup, this is just on my home network, and what will happen is it would, uh, or should, pick up a uh, address from my router via DHCP. Okay. Oh, almost forgot, and I need to hook it up to the screen. So I have a HDMI cable. And then the last thing is to connect the, the power connector. Which goes right here. 
And now we should be good to go. So we take that little bundle of wires, stick them right there. Plug them in. So now we're getting a uh, rainbow screen here. Okay, so now it is booting up for the first time, and what it's doing is it's currently setting up the SD card. It's extracting the file system, it's creating uh, the partitions and, and all that good stuff that it, it needs in order to run. So I have done this once before uh, and I'm doing it again so I have a backup of uh, all the media cards. And so we're just going to let this run until it's done. Okay, we're back. So it finished extracting the file system and up it comes. So what I'm watching for here is the IP address. I have it set up so that my home network will give it a DHCP address. Nothing on the Pi, but it's hooked up to the network. It'll ask for one, it will get one. I just need to take note of what the number is. Okay, well, as luck would have it, my battery ran out just as the IP address went by. But I caught it. It got a, a IP address from DHCP of 192.168.1.153. Now, the Raspberry Pi is now booted with FPP. It has an IP address of 192.168.1.153. So now I should be able to access it via the web. So I go to 192.168.1.153, and voila, there it is, Falcon Player FPP. So it's all ready to go. Now, there are upgrades available, so I installed FPP 1.5, but since then there's been some updates. So I am currently connected to the internet, so I can upgrade this automatically. So I click on Upgrade, it tells me what it has, I click on Upgrade again, yes. Have an hourglass on the console where uh, I can see that it's uh, it's rebooting now okay so it's finished rebooting so I'm gonna hit refresh here okay it's still there and now I'm gonna upgrade to 1.7 there are the release notes okay you get the hourglass again and once again the uh, system is restarting. Okay, and it's finished rebooting. So now I hit refresh again. And there are no more there are no more updates to be had. So very happy. Um, so now that it's up and running I'm gonna do some of the initial configuration. Essentially I'm just gonna set up the network. So I wanted to give it a static IP instead of booting up of a DHCP because that can potentially change. So I'm going to give it the address of 192.168.1.213. Its netmask is a 24-bit netmask and my router is at 192.168.1.254. I hit update information and that is now saved. Okay, this is FPP. This is the host name. Okay, so 192.168.1.213 is its address and this is what it's this is the name so I'm going to call this FPP dash pi 2 I think it's a 2b yep dash 001 you never know I may eventually have hundreds of these save it says host name is saved and I think that is pretty much all I am going to do for for this video. And that's it. So I'm going to shut it down and call it done.